hey guys and welcome to my youtube channel if this is the first time you are seeing my face my name is amara and this particular tutorial is going to be on how to make the beautiful pants with perfect fitting just like the one you saw at the beginning of the video but first you need to know how to draft a pants pattern properly i've gotten a request on pants pattern of different types so what i'm going to do is just to draft this pattern and with this pattern i'll show you guys how to create all those other pants okay so at this point guys i hope you've hit on that subscribe button and you've turned on your post notification because you don't want to miss out on my next tutorial which is going to be how to make this beautiful pants now let's just get at it the first thing you'll be needing is going to be your pattern paper and you need to ensure that your pattern paper is long enough to contain your trouser length okay because you want to draft everything on your pattern paper these are my drawing tools i have my rule my marker my pencil and everything i'm going to need to draft this is going to be the top of the pattern paper and this side i'm pointing at is going to serve as our side front from the top of your pattern paper you're going to come down by one inch and from the side front you're also going to come in by one inch and this one inch you are coming in by is going to be for adding stitching allowance after we are drawn drafting our pattern I'll just label that the side front after that the next thing you'll be doing is to place your vertical measurements okay so before placing my vertical measurements my band is actually 1.5 inch so i'll make sure to take note of that 1.5 inch before placing my vertical measurements the next thing to do is to place your crotch depth measurement and to get your crotch depth measurement you have to divide your hip by four and then add two inches to that now let me just explain something i usually add 2 or 2.5 inches if i'm making a high waist pant but if i'm not making a high waist pant i could add 1 or 1.5 inch so after doing the calculation what i have from my crotch depth is 14 inches so i'm just going to mark that on both sides of my pattern paper and rule really a straight line across and do not forget to take note of your band height as you can see i'm taking note of my 1.5 band height before placing my measurements on my pattern paper to get your hip measurement, you have to come up from the crotch depth line, which you already got by 2 inches or by 2.5 inches. Here, I'll be using 2.5 inches. I just went ahead to label my lines, the waist, the hip, and the crotch depth line. The next thing you'll be doing now is to mark your hip measurements divided by 4 on your crotch depth and also on your waist and connect together with a straight line mine i have 12 inches so i'll mark that on the crotch dead line and i'll also mark that on my waistline and i'm going to connect this the next measurement you'll be marking is going to be your knee measurement do not forget to take note of your band height mine is 1.5 as i'm already taking here then i'm going to mark my knee measurement which is 24 inches i'll mark that on both sides and i'll connect with a straight line i went ahead to label my knee line Taking note of your band height, go ahead and now measure the length of your trouser. For me, I'm using about 44 inches, so I'm going to mark that and rule a straight line across. I also went ahead to label that as my hem. Now let's come back to the upper part of our pattern. The next measurement you'll be taking is going to be the crouch depth extension measurement. And to get your crouch depth extension measurement, you have to divide your total hip by 20 and after dividing my hip by 20 what i got was about 2.4 but i'll be approximating that to 2.5 and i'm going to be placing that on my crotch depth line just like you see me doing now let me just give you a free tip if you're from hip size of 32 let me just say 32 to 39 use about two inches for your crotch depth extension but if you have a hip size of from 40 to 48 or there about you use 2.5 okay Unless the person is on a plus plus size, then you know that you have to go above 2.5. Another thing I do to help me get a perfect crotch curve is to come in from that point. You see me pointing out by like one inch. So I'll just come in there and mark the one inch and I'll use my curve to connect that into my line just like so. And I'll just use my marker to outline that to my waistline. I'm stopping there because as you all already know or if you don't know let me tell you for the front at the center front you have to come down by about one inch and this is to reduce any form of bulge to make your trouser look funny 
so coming down by one inch is going to totally eliminate that the next thing you'll be doing is to divide your weight measurement by four you mark your waist measurement and add one inch for that now you'll be connecting what you have at your waistline to the hip point just like you see me doing and also you'll be connecting what you have at the waistline to this point on the center front that you came down by one inch just like you see me doing here the next thing is to place your dart and an easy way to do that is just to get the total measurement of what you have on your waist and divide it by two you could do that simply by just folding your tape and marking the midpoint so the total of what i have on my waist is nine and after dividing by two i have 4.5 so i'll just mark that there and i'll be using a dart length of about five inches come out on both sides of your dart point by half of an inch and you're going to connect this into the length of the dart just like you see me doing i'll just outline the line from my hip to my crotch the next thing you'll be doing is to get your crease line and this crease line is really really important if you want your trouser to look straight and not funny and how to get this is to get the total measurement on your crotch which is from the beginning of the crotch to the crotch that extension to the crotch extension just like you see me doing and you fold your tape into two just to get the midpoint of that now this midpoint you have here is what you're going to mark on your knee line and on the length of your trousers just like you see me doing after marking this point now connect it with a straight line all the way to the crotch that line just like this now that we have this crease line whatever measurement you have you're just going to divide it into two and spread it equally on both sides of the line now the next measurement i'm going to be taking is going to be my knee i already measured my knee and i have a tutorial on my channel on how to take accurate body measurements to make a perfect pant so for my knee here i have i'm using 20 and i'm going to divide that 20 by 2 okay after dividing that 20 by 2 what i have here is 10 inches and this 10 inches i'm going to divide it into two equally on both sides of my knee line i'll be adding one inch to what i have on my total knee so because i want extra ease so instead of 10 i have 11 so it's going to be 5.5 there and then i'll mark 10.5 here the next thing to do is to connect from this point to the crotch that is tension and the other side into the crotch just like you see me doing now for the hem remove two inches from what you have on your total knee and place it on the hem so i'm removing two inches from the 10 so i have it i'm marking four on both sides and i'm going to connect this with a straight line into my knee line normally we should be done drafting our front pattern and just go ahead and add our stitching allowance but because i got a request on different type of pants so i'll just go ahead and add a pocket and also a zip fly to this pattern that way we can use it to make different kind of pants we don't have to be drafting another pattern you could add your zipper allowance to the side of the center front or you could add it to the side of this trouser but for this particular tutorial i'll be putting a zip flyer to this center front first off go ahead and add a half inch stitching allowance to this part of your center front just like you see me doing i'm just going to level the 0 0.5 inch stitching allowance i added there also to this side of your pattern you could add 0 0.5 to 1 inch stitching allowance i'll be using 0 0.5 inch stitching allowance and i'm going to mark that all through this side of my pattern and connect it with a straight line on my side front i'll also be adding half inch you can go ahead and use one inch if you want but i'll be using half inch and i'll mark it all the way through and connect it just like so on the waist add half inch stitching allowance and connect that together just like you see me doing
after marking the stitching allowance the next thing we'll be doing is to place the length of our zipper fly so i'm going to be starting from that point you see me doing there and i'll be using a length of five inches for my zipper fly the next thing is to mark the width of your zipper fly here i'll be adding 1.5 inch and you can also use two inches but i'll be using 1.5 and i'm going to connect it into my waistline just like that the length of my zipper fly is actually five inches but if you add that extra half inch above my waistline that is for stitching allowance i have 5.5 so i'll just also mark that on this side mark my 1.5 inch width and i'm just going to scale that up like you see me doing now at the bottom of my zip fly i'm just going to form a curve there you can use your free hand to do this just like you see me doing after done with that you're done with the zipper fly and now go ahead and draft out the pocket now for my pocket from that side of my side front i'm going to come in by two inches and i'm going to mark that there and for the length of my pocket i'll be using about 7.5 to 8 inches just make sure that your hand can pass through that part without stress then connect these two points together with a curve just like you see me doing You really need to pay attention in this part so you don't get lost this line we just drew this curve is for the pocket facing now for the pocket bag from that point there i'm going to come in by about three inches and then for the pocket facing length i'm going to mark about two inches from that first point just like you see me doing there now i'm going to connect those points together just like you see me doing now now because i want my pocket bag to be curvy and not straight i'm just going to form a curve between these two points just like this now this that i'm using my hand to describe is my pocket bag and then this is my pocket facing okay so when i'm cutting it out you guys will understand more just labeling my crease line because i forgot to label this we are not done with the pattern paper now i'll go ahead and cut it along the allowance lines We are done with the front pattern and you'll be needing to cut out two of these on your fabric. Now using another pattern paper, I'm going to trace out my pocket facing, my pocket bag and the zipper fly shield just like you see me doing. So just get a little piece of pattern paper like this and what you're going to do is to place your pattern on it and the next thing I'll be doing here is to trace out the pocket bag and the pocket facing just like you see me doing. Because this is just a tracing, you might not see it when i'm done tracing to cut out but if you do it yourself you see them because they are just connecting with dots i'm done tracing out on the pattern paper and i'm just going to cut it out like i said earlier you won't be able to see it because it's the tracing and it's connected with dots so i can see them and when you do yours you'll be able to do see them too so i'm just going to cut it out now and you see how the shape will come out just exactly like the one on my pattern paper i'll just go ahead and label out the pocket bag and just exactly the way i did this i'm going to trace out the pocket facing and the zip fly shield and i'm going to cut them all too now i have my pocket facing which is this one and my pocket bag which is this one i hope you understand that now i'm just going to trace out the zip fly shield and cut it out just the way i did for the others we are done with the front pattern now let's quickly draft out the back pattern for the back pattern, I already went ahead to place my vertical measurement just like how we did in front. But for the waist from the top, I came down by 2 inches. For the side back, I came in by 1.5 inch. I have my crotch dead there and you already know how to get that. From there, 2.5 inches up, I have my hip line. That's my waistline. This is my knee line. And I have the length of my trousers. Now, just like we did in front, just mark your hip line divided by 4. 
on your crotch depth and also on your waistline. Connect these two points together with a straight line. For the crotch depth extension on the back pattern, add 2.5 or 3 inches if you are really on the bigger side to what you had on your crotch depth in front. Then on the hip line, I'm going to come out also by 2 inches and I'm going to connect these two points together and then into the waist just like you see me doing. Now you guys, at this point, I will say you should come in by 0.25 inch on this waist part. And this is supposed to help to snatch the waist at the back as you know our waist is a bit curved in at the back. So first I'll come up by 1.5 inch like I already did there. And then I'll mark my waist measurement divided by 4 on my waistline. I'll add 1 inch for that. Like I said before, on this center back, I'm going to come up by 1.5 inch. And this 1.5 inch is going to help to give fitting. So when you sit down, your trouser isn't going down, okay? It's supposed to help to cover the butt well. And now I'll just connect that 1.5 inch I came up by into my waistline, just like so. Now, because you want the measurement to have here to be exactly tight on our waist, you need to make sure that the measurement you have on the first waistline and the one you came up by by 1.5 inch is the same as you can see i have an extra half inch so what i'm going to do like i wanted to do earlier is to come in by 0.5 inch and blend it in just like you see me doing just like that and i'm going to cancel the first line and this is now my new line now i'll just connect my waist measurement into my hip and crotch that now just like you did in front to get your dart point just divide what you have on your total waist by two and then you come down by five inches for the back i'll be using 5.5 and i'm going to connect that with a straight line come out by 0 0.5 inch on both sides of my dart point and connect it to the dart length now just like you did in front go ahead and get your crease line you take the total measurement of what you have on your crotch line and you divide it by two you can slip me do that by folding your tape into two and marking the midpoint this midpoint you'll be marking it on the knee and on the length of your trouser and just connect them all with a straight line just like you see me doing for the front we used 10 inches and we added one which made it 11 so we shared 5.5 inch on both sides for the back knee i'll be using 12 because the back pattern is supposed to be a little bit bigger than the front so i'm going to divide that 12 inches to both sides which is 66 inches i just went ahead and connected that already to my crotch line and then on the length of the trouser i'll be using 10 inches and that's like 5 inches distributed to both sides of my length line just like you see me doing and i'm going to connect that into the knee line like so Now we are done with the back pattern and do not forget to add your stitching allowance i added a 0 0.5 stitching allowance to the center back this way and i added one inch to my side back for the back we'll be cutting out two pieces for the back also this part i also added 0 0.5 inch and also to the top of my waist i also added 0 0.5 inch stitching allowance now we are done with the pattern drafting and we have come to the end of this tutorial Thank you for watching and I hope this tutorial was really really helpful. In my next tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to stitch and how to make it into a beautiful pant like this. Do not forget to hit on that subscribe button, turn on your post notification to like and also comment if you have any questions at all. If you love this video and it was really helpful, do not forget to share with your family and friends who you think would need to see this. Okay, I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!